broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, welcome to our bonus February Life Saving Technology Power Hour. We are here together live with April Harris from adopt a pet and we're really appreciative of the opportunity to hear directly from her about the opportunity that you guys have to be able to share with sometimes the public opportunities when they're in need of surrounding a pet, that there are options for them and great tools out there, ways to get your adoptables seen more readily. So we're excited to hear um, more about that and um, the offer that she makes to help those of you who might need her assistance in getting started. Uh, we're so appreciative of all of you for being here because we know you're busy and we're excited to have you here live to be able to ask your questions in the moment. So uh, that being said, we will turn the time over to April to take it away. Thanks, April. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm really excited to talk to you guys today about the new rehome soft service that AdoptPet.com is offering. But before I get started into that, I wanted to tell you a little bit about me um, and why the rehome service really matters a lot to me. So back in 2001, I've always had a love for animals. I, who doesn't love animals? Um, but uh, a friend of mine said, you know, you should consider fostering for a rescue organization. And I said, what's fostering? So I started fostering animals and um, quickly started uh, my love and passion for animal rescue. I spent a few years working for a rescue where I did uh, things like post pets on adopt a pet and pet finder, and I would go to the shelter and select animals. And then I had an opportunity to work for Maricopa County Animal Care and Control. I drove their mobile adoption bus and went off site and talked to people about how to do, you know, adoptions at these big events. Um, I selected animals from the large shelters and, and took them to our smaller no-kill facility. I eventually ended up at Salt Lake County Animal Services where I did adoptions, I did customer service supervisor, and eventually became the director there and helped that shelter achieve a no-kill status in 2013. Um, I'm really, really passionate about animal rescue and I'm extremely passionate about how different types of organizations can really work together to make a huge impact on both the animals that are out there in the community, but also the people, because every pet has a person attached to it somehow, whether it's the person who found it or the person who's owned it um, or the person who's adopting it. So as you can see from these pictures, I do have a soft spot for uh, chihuahuas. I am a, definitely a fan of the rabid chihuahua that nobody can get near. I often bring it home and try to work with it. But I am also a big fan of birds and tortoises, and I even own a pit bull. So that's a little bit about me. And now we'll get started into why we created a rehome service. So we were working with Petco Foundation and talking about what's something that we could do outside of just posting pets for adoption um, to really help animal uh, shelters and rescues and pet owners that are out there. And when we started talking about it, we you know, talked about what's currently available when somebody needs to read home a pet. You know, if I go to a shelter or rescue, you know, you can intake the pet, of course. You can offer me retention resources. So if I'm able to keep the pet, maybe these resources can help me through spay and neuter or behavior modification. And you can also offer diversion resources, which is, hey, try this other organization or try rehoming this pet on your own. And from a pet owner's perspective, they really have Craigslist. They can also post on Facebook. Um, Nextdoor is becoming quite popular for people who need to rehome. They can ask their friends and relatives. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to show these pets on a platform where we have 5 million visitors each month that aren't always able to find a pet through a shelter or rescue organization that might match the criteria that they're looking for. So we joined forces with the Petco Foundation and launched the rehome service in March of 2017. So I'm gonna give a little bit into how rehome works. You guys are gonna to get to see the perspective from the pet owner and also the adopter. I'm gonna move through this fairly quickly um, just because we do have resources where you can watch this video online. Um, and it's kind of how things work for you as far as the questions that you need to have answered when you're bringing a pet into your care and the questions you would ask of an adopter. So you're gonna see a lot of similarities there. So when a pet owner gets started, we're gonna ask them to do a few things. We're gonna have them create a pet profile, which is then gonna be displayed on adoptpet.com and it's gonna be available in all of the searches. We're gonna have them review applications. The applications are taken from adoptpet.com and shared with the pet owner. 
we're going to have them meet adopters, and we provide a lot of guidance on how to do that safely. And then they're going to finalize the adoption, which is also done through adoptpet.com. So there's a legal transfer of ownership, and they're going to pay an adoption donation fee. When the pet owner creates a profile, we're going to ask them for some basic information and have them agree to our terms and conditions. They do have to be over 18 years of age. We do need to know the species, the pet's name, whether or not it's spayed and neutered, the reason that they're rehoming, how long they have, their phone number, email address. They need to set up a password so they can log in at a later date, and they have to agree to our terms. When they select their location, we do require the zip code, and then we'll actually add in the city and state. And this is what determines when a pet will show up in an adoptpet.com search. So if I'm in 84738, I'm not only gonna see that the, the pets that are available through shelters and rescues, but I'm also gonna see anybody who's rehoming a pet within 50 miles of that zip code. We do ask for some specific characteristics, like gender, breed, age group, size group, color. They can add up to four photos and also a video. The reason we ask for these characteristics is these are the things that people tend to be searching for when they come to our site. So they will search by breed, they will search by size or age group. We do ask them for some additional key facts about their pet if they know this, like is it house trained, good with dogs, good with cats, Good with kids, these are really common questions that adopters have. Is it a purebred? Is it a special needs animal? And does it need an experienced adopter? They can then write a story about the pet. And this is where we ask them to write a really compelling story about why they need to rehome the pet, anything they know about the pet that's gonna help you get adopted. For safety reasons, our system will actually detect if they put in a home address, phone number, or an adoption fee here. And this is just to protect them from somebody showing up their house, demanding a dog, calling them, scammers and spammers, getting a hold of their phone number. So our system will detect that. Anybody who has a, um, a home address, phone number, adoption fee put into their story, it actually flags the profile and asks us to review before it will be published. So we do do some manual review on these just to make sure that we can either remove it or reword it if it's something legitimate or flag it if it's a possible scammer or breeder who's trying to use the system and take advantage. They do have to agree to have the adoption fee donated to the organization that referred them. So we do charge an adoption fee just to ensure that there's no free to get home exchanges, but that adoption fee is actually going to go back to your organization if you referred them. They're going to select how they heard about us, um, so they can select shelter or rescue. Pet Peace of Mind is just, uh, it's an organization you guys can Google search that helps people who are going into assisted living type situations, and they're referring a lot of those pet owners to rehome, to rehome their pet before they go into assisted living, or they found us organically. When they say shelter or rescue, they're going to put in their zip code, and then they can find the name of the shelter or rescue in the list. They'll select that organization's name, and then 100% of the adoption donation fee is given to that organization that referred the pet owner. We mail out checks every single month to your organization for all the adoption fees that were, were collected on pets that you referred. When the profile's um, completed, they can actually publish it. It's going to show them how percentage-wise how complete it is. So anything that's marked with a blue check mark, it's finished. Um, characteristics you can see here have a gray check mark, so they didn't fill them all out. There's a few that they probably listed as unknown. And this just helps them know how, how, pro, how complete their profile is. The more complete a profile is, the more likely it is to be viewed and receive applications. They'll get a congrats message asking them to confirm their email. And then they'll also get an email from us that gives them lots of tips and tricks on how to take great photos, write a really compelling story, and how to get a quick video uploaded that shows the personality of their pet. There are some scenarios that require staff review before the pet could actually be published. If it's a kitten or a puppy or they select young, and this is just so that we can make sure that these are really people who do have pets that they're trying to rehome, that they're not trying to take advantage of the system, and that there are no scammers that actually make it through. If there's no photo and nor story, no story, that's very suspicious to us, so we do look. We do require one or the other in order to publish the pet. If there are any numbers in their story, like phone numbers, adoption fees, anything like that. If it's a purebred, it does get flagged because we do require that the purebred is spayed or neutered before we will publish the pet to ensure that nobody's trying to get a purebred pet and then breed it. Any change in the story after the pet was created. So if the pet was published and then they went in and added an adoption fee, it's going to kick that over to us for review. 
If they select the reason for rehome a found or abandoned, we do actually follow up with them to find out how long ago they found the pet. If it was less than 30 days, we do require that they take the pet to animal control or follow whatever uh, rules and laws are in their area for found pets. And if it's fostered, we do follow up with them first to find out are they fostering for an organization um, or are they they selected foster because they found the pet and they don't want to keep but so we just want to get more information from them before we publish that pet. This is what their dashboard looks like. So once they are ready, they can go in here. This is where they can do lots of things like view their profile and make edits. They can view their applications and questions. They can upload additional documentation. You can see here, this is what the profile looks like. They can share their pet's profile on Facebook. They can also view the profile live on adoptpet.com if they want to share that link. And they can also remove their pet's profile. This is what the live profile looks like on adoptpet.com. And you can see here, we do include why the pet needs to find a new home, um, all the information that they were able to provide us. If they decide to delete the profile, we do ask them why. Um, if they select my pet was adopted, We'll ask how it was adopted because we are uh, gathering this data for our own use so that we can better understand. Um, if they select it was given to an animal welfare organization, we do ask them to provide the name of the shelter and this is uh, or rescue. And this is just in case the shelter or rescue reaches out to us and asks if we can share the photos or additional details about the pet. And if they select they decided to keep the pet, we'll ask them for how long. Is it indefinitely or for a couple of months? Just how long are they intending on keeping the pet? You'll see here that this is a pet that's showing up in the search. So somebody searched for a senior Chihuahua mix um, and Cupcake is showing up right next to Sabrina, who's available through a local shelter, and Boomer, who's available through a rescue organization. The rehome pets also go out in our new pet alerts, which uh, people can sign up for a saved search based off what they're looking for. And then having instead of having to search adoptpet.com all the time, they can actually just receive an email every day of pets that meet the, meet the criteria that they're looking for. You'll see here Sabrina is available for because but because animals sorry because animals matter. So her profile looks a little bit different. Um, it'll say ask about me, and this is where the uh, potential adopter can send an inquiry over to the rescue organization. If it's a rehome pet, you'll see here that it says I'm being cared for by a private owner and the adoption fee, and it'll also show the apply to adopt button. So the application, when somebody clicks that apply to adopt, um, we're gonna ask them several questions. What describes them? Do they have any children living in the household? If they do, how many? And what are the ages? Uh, what describes their home? You know, what type of household is it? Uh, do they have an outdoor space? Does the outdoor space include a fence? Uh, is this your first time caring for a pet? There's slightly different questions for cats. Uh, do you have any other pets at home? What kind are they and how many of those do you have? which describes your household activity level, where will your pet sleep. Um, on cats, this uh, is slightly different. Um, it's just asking more cat-friendly questions. Are you able to provide daily exercise for your pet? And how many hours will your pet be alone each day? And then we'd like for them to tell us more information about why they're looking for this pet specifically. They have to agree to our terms and conditions, um, which means that we don't guarantee that they'll be selected. They have to, you know, hold us harmless from any damage the pet does if they do choose to adopt. Uh, there is a list of adoption fees, and we do tell them if they're asked to pay anything differently to please let us know. These adoption fees are slightly outdated. And then if the pet is intact, we do require that the pet is spayed or neutered be, uh, within 30 days of adoption. We do follow up with them 30 days requiring proof. So we do need a spay and neuter certificate from their veterinarian. If it's a male dog, they can send us photos that the, uh, you know, it's been neutered or if it's a female, we will accept photos of the spay and uh, scar as well. So then they get a notification letting them know their application's been submitted and an email from us on next steps and what to do while they're waiting for their application to be reviewed. The pet owner is going to be notified that they have an application. They can head into their dashboard where they can view the application. And they're going to be able to see all of the questions that we asked of the potential adopter. What's really great here is we ask a lot more questions than a, a pet owner might think to ask. So we provide screening guidance as to why we ask these questions. So if they click on any one of these cards, we'll actually tell them why we asked the question, what question we asked along with the possible answers, and give them some recommendations on 
additional questions they may want to ask or why this question may be important to them. If they're ready to meet with the adopter or if they decide that maybe this adopter is not a good fit, they can then either decline the adoption and we'll ask them why they declined and then we'll send an email to the uh, potential adopter letting them know that they were not selected um, but to continue looking for a pet or they can contact the adopter and we'll show them the email address and phone number so that they can reach out to set up a meet and greet. Hey, April. Um, yes. We do have a question that has come in. Um, it's regarding spay neuter and uh, mm -hmm. Jesse Sullivan is on the line and she's wondering about what happens if the adopter doesn't follow up with proof of spay and neuter and do you have specific steps that you take if they don't? Yes, we do. So uh, we've only had a handful that aren't all over this because most of the females don't want them going into heat. Um, and most of the people coming to our site actually just assume that spay and neuter is going to happen or has already happened because they're used to looking at shelter and rescue pets. Um, so after 30 days, if we don't receive a response, we're going to actually reach out to them two weeks later by phone. Um, and we're gonna actually contact a vet in their area or work with a local rescue or shelter that offers low cost spay and neuter and just work with them to get the pet spayed and neutered. We haven't had any problems with this so far. The number one thing that prevents people from actually getting the spay and neuter done is they just don't know where where to go, especially if it's their first time adopting a pet. They're like, where do I get this done? If I set up an appointment at a vet, it might be $250 or $300 if it's a large dog. So we're trying to help them find places to get it done for, you know, at a reasonable price. While we're paused for just a second, um, I also want to just navigate everybody to knowing that if you do have a question, we are taking them throughout. So I appreciate Jesse uh, bringing that first question in. On the right hand panel of your screen towards the bottom you'll see a section that says questions you can click on the arrow to maximize that type your question in so that those questions will come into me as a facilitator and i will um, interject as needed to get those questions surfaced for you guys and we definitely want you to be able to do that um ah, i took just long enough for another question to come in april so um <laughs> sherry cahill wants to know if the system um flag repeat rehomers to basically prevent people from using this as a way to place um, repeat or unwanted litters versus spay and neuter. Yes, uh, it does. And we have a team of three of us. Um, I actually assist with the viewing of these as well. So for instance, today we have four different people who have added more than one pet. So we're going to be reaching out to them and finding out, are they adding more than one pet because they legitimately had you know, two cats that showed up around their house or what's really going on. And there are times that we just have to flag them and prevent them. Once they're flagged, they can never add another pet uh, to the rehome using the phone number or email address. Um, so there are ways they figure out by creating a different email address, but then they have to create a VoIP. Any phone number that's a VoIP also gets flagged because we know that's not a legitimate phone number. So we're doing a lot of stuff to catch people that should not be using the system. And if it's somebody who has a lot of pets, um, sometimes they're actually legitimately trying to help pets and maybe we can help them become a rescue organization um, because they really are doing great things for the pets. They just don't, they're not aware of how to use Adopt-a-Pet to actually showcase those animals. So in short, we do a lot of manual, we, we look at about 400 pets each day that we have to manually review and see what's going on with them. I have a few more questions that come in, so if you're okay to kind of keep yeah. going on those, is that all right? Okay, yeah. super. Um, um, we have Beverly Wilson asking if a person surrenders a pet to a rescue organization and sets up a rehome account, who updates the record if the rescue group adopts the pet? So there's two ways that that can be done. Um, the pet owner can actually just go in and delete the profile and tell us that they relinquished it to a rescue, or the rescue can reach out to us um, with the pet ID or just some way for us to identify it, and we will actually go into the system and mark it on behalf of the pet owner so that it comes off of free home. Perfect, thank you. The, we have two more. So um, Terry DeCase says that she sees a lot of those Facebook posts, you know, for animals, mostly dogs, who are posted stating that they'll be euthanized if not adopted. And she's curious, are these posts, are these posts using this database? And if not, how can we get them to? I'm, 
I'm not sure if they're using, because there's no way to push from Facebook to rehome, you would have to create a profile. But I think the easiest thing to do is if you see somebody who's doing that is just to respond to their post with, did you know that there's this service available, rehome.adoptpet.com? Because I just don't think they probably know that we're available and they can use the service. It's completely free for the pet owner. So there's nothing wrong with them creating a profile. And if they end up you know, having to surrender the pet or rehoming it outside of rehome, um, they can remove that profile. So it's all about you know, having the community be aware of rehome and when they see somebody needs to rehome their pet, encouraging them to use the service that's really safe and organized and it's gonna help them get their pet rehomed quickly because of how many people view the website. Yeah, okay, super. So um, we have a question about advocacy groups and can they participate? So uh, she was saying some of these pages only allow groups that have physical custody of animals, but she feels like this is really needed in the area where they serve as an advocacy group. Do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, so we now allow you to have um, an adoptpet.com account. If you're an advocacy group, you do not have to actually perform adoptions. And then that way you can start referring and the adoption donation fees are gonna come back to you. Um, I usually work with advocacy groups just so I can make sure we get everything worded correctly so that when your organization shows up under the shelter and rescue list, that people understand that you are just an advocacy group. So I can definitely work with you to get your organization so that you can refer pet owners. Um, and take advantage of all the tools that we have and also get the adoption donation fees back to your organization to continue your advocacy. Awesome, and I lied, I have one more. And then the, the we do actually have two more, but I know the second one is one you're gonna cover later. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw one more at you and then let, let you keep cruising along. Um, Troy wants to know if there are any guidelines for what animals you will not allow to be posted. And if so, what are those guidelines? Yeah, there's quite a few that we really keep an eye on. Um, so purebred French Bulldogs, probably not shocking to any of you, but those are ones that we really need to know a lot more about the situation before they're gonna make it through to adoptpet.com. And that's for a couple of reasons. One is because, you know, somebody who bought a purebred French Bulldog for $1,000 or $2,000 and then is gonna rehome it for free, seems a little suspicious, but also they'll get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of applications and so we need to work with the pet owner if it's legitimate on how to stop the applications from coming through because it just gets overwhelming and it gets really frustrating for the applicants if they don't hear back um yeah so purebred french bulldogs are probably our number one that we keep an eye on uh sphinx cats are another one we really have to do a lot more digging um the other thing too is anybody who says that they're listing like they're fostering for a rescue organization or for a shelter, we want them to use the other side of adopt a pet because then that way they can collect the adoption fee for the organization, whatever adoption fee is set for that organization. Mm -hmm. So there's like a handful of situations. Um, it's really mostly specific to breed and then also puppies in general, we also keep a really close eye on because if you have a litter of puppies, we wanna make sure that you're spaying the mother um, while we're helping you find a home for the litter of puppies. And the same yeah. thing with cats and kittens as well. Uh, oftentimes people have a cat show up and they didn't realize it was pregnant and then it has kittens. And I will say that most cat owners are, they want the cat spayed. Like they don't wanna deal with kittens ever again. Um, <laughs> it's the dog owners that we have to kind of say, hey, like how can we help you while we're fine publishing these puppies, but we really need to get the mom spayed while we're working, <clears throat> excuse me, on finding that new home. So, and I'm not, that's probably not shocking to any of you guys because these are the same scenarios that if somebody were coming in and wanted to surrender a litter of puppies, you would ask the same question of, hey, what can we do about the mom so we don't see you six months from now with another litter of puppies? Right, is there anything, I know you said breed and puppies, but what about aggression? Does that play a part in anything as far as uh, your guidelines? Can, yeah, so they, the, they do have to actually agree that the pet has not bitten anybody in the past 10 days. Um, we will see some come through where they have bitten, but it's been outside of the past 10 days and we'll actually reach out to them to find out more information about the bite scenario because not every bite was unprovoked. Sometimes there are real situations like, hey, this dog, like a dachshund bit a child when the child walked up to the dachshund while it was eating. You know, that's just something that needs to be disclosed to the, the next adopter. So we do, if we see the word bite in there, um, a lot of pet owners just miscategorize aggression completely. So they'll say, I introduced this dog to one other dog at the dog park and it was aggressive, so it's not good with other dogs. 
So for us, we want to help them and really understand is that one scenario a true indication that the dog does not like other dogs or was it just the scenario it was in because it's going to reduce its chances of getting adopted if it's truly cannot go with another dog. The same thing with cats when they say like won't get along with the other cat in my household. We want to know how long, you know, did you try for five days or did you try for a month or has this been going on for like two years when you introduced another cat? Um, so there's a lot of it's, it, there's a lot of concierge type services that we do offer. Um, there's another component coming this year where we will offer additional concierge services at a, a small fee just so that we can cover the cost of you know, our time that we spend with the individual adopters. Perfect, thank you. I'm gonna let you give back to okay. your presentation and then I'll bring up the couple of other questions that I feel like you're probably gonna cover down the line, but we'll make sure and then okay. we'll keep you moving along. Thank you. So once the pet owners actually met with the, the new adopter and they're ready to complete the application, they can come back into their dashboard and click that complete adoption. This won't show up until they viewed the application and clicked on contact the adopter. Um, we're going to then show them an, a legal binding contract, which has all of their information, the pet owner's information, the adoption fee, the date. Um, we also have them select a contingency plan. So in the event it doesn't work out, do they want the pet back or do they want the new owner to use rehome if it doesn't work out? We never mention surrender to a shelter or rescue just because we're really trying to empower pet owners to take responsibility for their pet and use services that are available instead of just defaulting to a shelter or rescue. We do know sometimes that has to happen, but we're really trying to kind of have a paradigm shift and really change the way pet owners think about what they need to, what they have available when they need to rehome their pet. This then gets sent over to the potential, the new adopter. They're going to get an email saying, please submit your adoption fee that's already been preset. They submit it via credit card and then they're able to actually sign the final contract and then both parties get emailed saying, hey, your contract is complete. Here's all of your paperwork. You can go ahead and physically hand over the pet to the new adopter. More often than not, our website is mobile friendly. So this happens at the meet and greet where they're just doing this on their smartphone while they're right there meeting with the pet. The adoption fees range um, for dogs from 30 to 129 and on cats from 20 to 30. And this is just based off of factors like breed and, and uh, age. So a puppy is gonna be more than a senior dog or a cat with special needs. Um, we, we have been doing, this was not what we started with. So we, we changed these based off what, of what we learn. We don't keep any of these adoption fees. Um, so it's a fine line between charging enough that it doesn't encourage like free to get home exchanges or people adopting pets they really shouldn't be. But also recognizing that a lot of these pets haven't seen a vet. They don't have the level of care that you guys have provided in the pets that you're adopting out. Um, they haven't, you know, they're not up to date on vaccines or maybe they do still need spay and neuter. So that's where we, we walk the line and try to, to set a fee that still gets the pet adopted, but doesn't necessarily uh, prevent the new owner from taking the dog to a vet right away and having all the things done that, or the cat that needs to be done. So now I'm gonna get into what we've learned. So if we have any questions about the process for pet owners or applicants, now would probably be a good time to talk about those before we start talking about data. Okay, so I will ask this one because I'm, I'm not sure if we're talking specifically about uh, rehome or not. So I wanna make sure that we get this out there, but um, this person is asking about how to get this on their website. And I am not sure if this is something that you wanna take now or if you'd rather cover that later. I'm going to cover that at the end when I go over resources and how you can get this on your website right away. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's get into the data. And I think you guys will find this stuff really, really interesting because we're kind of data junkies at Adopt-a-Pet because we believe that if we're collecting data, we can quickly learn from that data and then build out features or kind of pivot based off of what we're learning. So first of all, I want to share the referring type. So of all the pets that have been referred, and then these are only pets that have actually been published and made available. So any pets that were flagged for any reason or unpublished or, you know, for any reason never were made available are not included in these numbers. But you can see here that 20% of the pets are coming as referrals from shelters and rescue organizations, and 80% of the pets are coming to us from organic searches. And that means they're just going to Google and searching rehome my dog or rehome my cat. So we spend a lot of effort and money on making sure that when somebody searches anything about like getting rid of my dog, getting rid of my cat, 
um, new home for my pet that rehome is going to show up so that they find out about this service and they go in and use it because chances are if they're searching for that they have more time than showing up at the shelter and i need to rehome my pet today we definitely want more shelters and rescues to refer um, and that's why we're doing this webinar of course is so that you guys know the service is available so when you get asked you can refer people this is for all the profiles that were created from inception through yesterday so species, it's 32% cats and 68% dogs. Um, so we're still trying to get cat owners aware of this and how they can use it. Um, something interesting is if we were to break this down on organic search versus shelter rescue, uh, shelters and rescues, it's actually closer to 50-50 of dogs and cats. Organic searches, it's much higher for dogs. So that gives us an opportunity to, how do we get in touch with the people who have cats that are looking to rehome their cats? Because they're not finding us as easily as those that are searching organically for rehoming a dog. So reason for rehome, the number one reason that accounts for 20% is that they have a busy schedule. We are right now doing some research and some surveys to better understand what that means. What, is, what does that mean, busy schedule? Like you're too busy for any pet, you're too busy for this pet because it requires a lot of time, you're too busy for this breed or this species. We just wanna understand uh, more in depth about the busy schedule. The second common, most common is relocating followed by human health, and the number one human health issue is related to allergies. Um, other pets, so it doesn't get along with a, the other pet in the household. Uh, in the beginning, they could select out, so not specified. We don't allow that anymore. They have to pick a reason, but in the beginning, they could say none of these apply. Landlord issues, you can see behavior then is down there at 6%. Found or abandoned is at 6%. Pregnant or infant or... Um, child reasons the six percent followed by four percent at fostered ongoing uh, cost and then a specific cost and the specific cost is a very very small number these are things like uh you know the pet had like got hit by a car and now needs to have some vet care what we do when they select specific costs we actually refer them to waggle.org and that's a crowdfunding um site that people can actually crowdfund for their vet bill and it's all verified it's all very very legit so if you guys are not aware of waggle that is something you can offer to somebody who just needs to raise uh, some funds for a very specific vet cost that needs to happen it's waggle.org so spay and neuter status you can see it's 73 percent are spayed and neutered 27 percent are intact um, <clears throat> organic searches it's higher for intact uh, the people who are actually referring from shelters and rescues are more often spayed and neutered. And I think that's because you guys are making sure that they're getting spayed and neutered through all the services that you provide. The age group, the number one age group is young. So this is another reason why we have a lot of manual um, publishing of pets that we have to we, we have to review these because any in those bottom two, kitten, puppy, and young, we do have to review, followed by adult and then senior. So this is the allergies is the human um, health one, but this is looking at the reason versus how long they have. So we asked them how long they have to rehome the pet. And you could see across the board, regardless of reason, you know, it's, it's running between 35 and 45%, followed by one month um, that they have. And this could be because of all those organic searches. So I know when somebody shows up at your door, they're like, we have to get rid of the pet today. But because they're finding us organically, um, about a, four, a quarter of all of them have a month to find a pet, and we know we can help them in that month. Something interesting to point out here is when they select busy schedule, there's a good portion, about a third of them, that have two months to no deadline, which tells us that they really want to find the right applicant for the pet, um, and even though they have a busy schedule, they definitely want to take their time in finding the new uh, owner for the pet. And then the other interesting one is about a third on behavior select over two months or no deadline. And what this tells us is that they wanna find somebody who can handle the behavior issues um, versus just, I need to get rid of this pet today, or I have two weeks. They really wanna find the best match um, to ensure that the pet doesn't get rehomed again. This is a map of all the pets. Um, so those big bubbles are where there's so many pets that were published um, that, that we give it a big, huge bubble. So you can see, that the more densely populated areas, of course, are gonna have more pets, but that there's plenty of areas where um, Florida has a large one because Jacksonville Humane Society has been referring for a couple of years now and they're a top refer. San Diego Humane Society has been referring and they're another top refer. So some of these bubbles are because of specific organizations who 
um, have been referring a lot of pet owners for you know a couple of years now. So here are the outcomes which make us really excited because 61% of the pets that have been have an outcome um, have been adopted. So that's a lot of pets that we prevented from going through the the system um, and prevented from going into a shelter or a rescue. At the time that I pulled this yesterday, there were still almost 16,000 pets listed as available on our site. You could see that almost 5,000 or 20% decided to keep the pet. Um, that could range from indefinitely, or they're gonna, we're gonna, they're working through some type of resource that was given to them to deal with behavior or medical issues. You can see then 6% and 7% relinquished to a shelter versus a rescue, and then there are 6% that are still pending adoption, so we're just waiting to complete the contracts. So, um, so far we've raised $250,000 in adoption donation fees for organizations just like yours. Um, we mail checks out every single month for every adoption that was done that month and completed. Um, we don't wanna keep the money, we wanna give it back to you. It's really to us about having a service that can help you guys not have to take the pet in, but also give you back some money to put back into resources or whatever it is that you wanna use the money for. So before I get into what resources we have available for your organization and like the toolkit, does anybody have any questions about the data? So this is somewhat related to the data, but um, you know, we've all seen the free pets that are given away without screening, like on a KSL or type uh, Craigslist type of service. Do you guys have any plans based on the success that you've had that you've just shown with that data to approach Craigslist or KSL is Utah specific, but to possibly maybe integrate with your service by chance? Yes, we have tried and tried and tried to get Craigslist um, to integrate with us so that if somebody selects like free, you know, they're giving away a pet for free that it just basically kicks them over to us. Um, Craigslist is not real easy to work with. Um, so we're going to keep trying and then it just comes down to an ethical dilemma. We could scrape their information and get them, you know, reach out to them, but we'd really like to try to just get them to work with us. But they're just really not interested. Um, and, you know, if you look at their site, it's pretty outdated and they don't, yeah, it's just, they're just not interested in working with us. Okay, that helps, thank you. <laughs> okay, we, so I will- We do oh. have a comment, if you want that though, before you sure. go in. Yeah. Um, you got actually a, a nice job comment on the data analysis because um, they feel like too many people skip that step. And she was surprised that behavior wasn't higher on the relinquish reason list, but they're grateful for the data just so they have that insight and appreciated you taking the time to gather it and share it. So there you have it. Yes, we love data and we love data so much that we're going to actually give data back to your organization once you start referring. So um, I'm going to get into what we offer for you and every community is different. So when we look at this, this is like at a very, very macro level when we're looking at behavior and we're looking at, you know, human health issues. But we know how important it is to look at data at a very micro um, level. And so some of the resources that we provide your organization if you decide you want to start referring and i can't imagine there's any reason why you wouldn't um, is a unique tracking url and what this url is instead of just referring people to rehome.adoptpet.com it's going to have a number at the very end of it and what this does is it locks down your organization name so during the pet profile creation process it's going to lock down your organization's name so that they can't change it and this allows us to share back statistics specific to your referrals. So how many pets were referred? Um, what are the species? What was the reason chosen? What are the outcomes? It also allows us to share the pet owner's information directly with you of anybody you referred. And what this is good for is if you do have a spay and neuter program or perhaps you do have space and you do wanna take in some of the animals, uh, when they actually uh, sign up for a profile, they have to agree to have their information shared with whoever referred them. So we can send you a list once a month or you know, once every two weeks of everybody you've referred and the outcomes of those pets, including those that are still available. And then the statistics we send out quarterly, and it's just a really nice snapshot of everything I showed you of you know, the species, the time, the age, the reason, and then the outcome. So this is where it just shows it locks that information down. 
We also can provide you with a website banner. So this has your unique tracking URL in the code. So you can just dump this on your website. If anybody clicks on it, it's got your unique tracking URL. Um, and it looks a little nicer than just having a URL. We know that website visitors are much more likely to click on a banner than a simple URL. So we provide this to you in three different sizes. We also have poster and flyer downloads. So if you'd like to have a poster printed or have flyers at maybe an event you're going to, or if there's any reason why you maybe want to hand this information out, you can. We also have business card uh, templates available as well. And that's just a simple business card that has your unique tracking URL on it. And then you can have that printed and you can hand that out to people um, that come in that are thinking about rehoming their pet or you want to maybe see if they can take a few weeks to try rehome before you take it or if you do managed admissions um, or require appointments for surrenders that's really helpful because it's got your link right on it. We also offer community pets listings um, and this basically displays only the animals that you have referred and I'm going to show you this is an example of Lollipop Farm. They were managing their rehome listings and courtesy postings by hand so they would have to add every single pet and then follow up with a pet owner later on to see if they still needed help. So what we do is we provide you with it's called an iframe code and it's going to keep the list updated in real time and we maintain the list. So I give you this code, you put it on your website and it completely eliminates the needs for courtesy posting. And this is one way you can get people off of using a Craigslist or Facebook is to actually take them onto your website, give them that unique URL to actually create their pet and their pet, as soon as we publish the profile, is going to show up in this list. Um, this is an example of the iframe, but this, they have 69 pages of pets that they have referred. And then on their website, when people are coming, they actually have a specific page for community pets where they can then showcase the pets that need to be rehomed in the community, which is fantastic. If you don't have a pet that somebody's looking for at your shelter or rescue, why not help them match up with somebody else in your community that may prevent that pet from coming into your care? Another thing that Broward Humane Society did um, is they have on their website rehome and they have click here to learn more. When you click on that, that takes them, that's got their tracking URL in it as that word, the word there. So it's going to take them right over to rehome. But they actually took our poster um, download and actually created this great banner that goes in their lobby. So when somebody walks in, they see this information here. It's co-branded. Um, we also have people who have done little tabletop banners for about $40. So there's different things you can do to try to engage with people right when they walk in the door, if you have an intake area, um, and really get the word out that this is a service that you're promoting. So next steps for you, um, it's going to be really easy for you guys to start taking advantage of the service and start promoting it. You just need to email me with your organization name. So my email is april at adoptpet.com. It's really easy to remember. I just need your organization name so I can find you in the system and get you that URL. Add the information about Rehome on your website and in your email responses if you do candy email responses. And I'm here to help you with this. So if you're not sure about how to get that tracking URL on your website, I'm going to help you out. We have developers and engineers on our side that can help get this on your website as quickly as possible so that you can start referring people and have that as a resource. And then share my contact information with your staff and volunteers. This is because I'm here to help you and I'm really here to help train your staff and your volunteers and help them understand this. I don't expect you guys to know everything there is about Rehome and how it works. So if you have anybody on your team or you want to set up a volunteer training where I'll walk them through this, I am happy to do so. My number one priority is making sure that you guys have this resource available to you and that when people are coming to you that you know this resource exists that you can offer to them. And now we're ready for any more questions. So we did have one come in when we paused um, about the data. So I'll just sort of resurface that. Um, that's piggybacking on the topic about appreciating the data that you shared. So if they wanted to see updates um, on that data as you continue to gather it and compile it, do you um, share that anywhere? Where would they find the updated data? Just shoot me an email saying, hey, I'd really like to see updated data and I'll send it to you quarterly for the like the macro level data. I have no problems doing that. OK, cool. Um, so Beverly Wilson asks if a person anonymously leaves a pet without with excuse me, with a rescue group like left outside at night in a box or something, can the rescue group themselves post to rehome even not having owner information? 
So the rescue group would want to post directly through Adopt-a-Pet, not through Rehome. Rehome is really for pet owners. And the reason why we would want the rescue group to adopt through Adopt-a-Pet is so that you can choose your adoption process, you can choose your adoption fee. Um, it's still going to show up in the searches, it's still going to go out in new pet alerts, but we would want to get you set up with a rescue account so that you can publish pets that way and not use Rehome. I wonder if this might be just take a minute to clarify for folks who are on the call the difference between Rehome and Adopt Pet for those that don't know. Um, and then, you know, maybe we put a little bit of that in our follow up e email if they're interested and they haven't done anything with Adopt a Pet yet about how to get their adoptables through you guys um, more easily promoted sure. on their websites. Do you mind talking to that for a minute? Yeah, so adoptapet.com is a is a search engine of adoptable pets. So a lot of you guys probably have heard of Pet Finder. We are like Pet Finder. We're just funded differently. We're a nonprofit, therefore a profit that's owned by Purina. We're a nonprofit who's sponsored by Purina. So a lot of people think that we're one and the same. But basically what we do, we are an aggregate of all the available pets that are in a specific area. So we try to get every shelter and every rescue organization posting their pets onto adoptapet.com so that when somebody wants to adopt a pet instead of having to go to six or seven or 10 or 15 different websites to see the pets that are available in their area, they can come to adoptapet.com and see all of the pets that meet their criteria from all the organizations within a certain search radius. And they can select that of like 35 miles or 50. And if they're looking for a specific breed, so if I'm looking for a dachshund, um, I can actually do a nationwide search to see like what dachshunds are available in the entire country. So we have lots of options for rescues and shelters to get their pets onto Adopt a Pet. One thing we know is that we don't want you to have to manually add all of these pets to adopt a pet when you're already manually adding them into your animal management software. So we have imports available that are completely free to every single shelter software there is. So if you're using Pet Point, Chameleon, Animal Shelter Manager, Shelter Buddy, Rescue Groups, iShelters, Shelter Love, Pet Established, you name it. Um, we can set you up with an import to where whatever you put in your animal management software for available pets is going to then come through to adopt a pet either once a day at minimum or sometimes it even updates every five minutes. And then when you actually adopt that pet out, it's going to get removed from our database as well. So what's really cool about this is that if you add a pet that somebody has created a new pet alert or like a saved search for, we're going to email them the next day saying, hey, this pet's been added to the database. We think it matches your criteria. You should reach out to the organization. And what the shelter rescue account allows you to do is to set your own adoption fee, to set your own adoption process. All we're doing is making the connection. So we're connecting you with people who want to adopt the pet that you have. And then we're really leaving it up to you to make the decision of, is this the right adopter for this pet? Perhaps you have another pet that really meets the criteria. And to help you also build that relationship of the people within your community who are looking out there that are pet lovers that are looking to adopt, that may become volunteers or fosters. And an adoptpet.com account is 100% free for you. It's all the imports are free. There's nothing that costs any money. We also provide provide iframes for your adoptable pets. So if you have a website and you're managing like your adoptable pets manually, we can give you some code to where whatever's on adopt pet is going to show on your website and you'll no longer have to manually manage those pets as well. So we have a lot of options for you. You do. So if they, after this webinar, if there is somebody who wants to um, take advantage of maybe not just rehome, but also adopt a pet, would they just indicate that in their email to you, April? Yes. A lot of organizations have accounts from like way long ago. So I always check our database, see if you have an existing account. If you do, we'll update all the information. If you don't have an existing account, I'll work with you on getting that account created right away um, and get your import set up if you're using animal management software. Um, we're talking like this can all be done within a few hours that we can have your pets showing up on Adopt-a-Pet. And then Rehome is basically the pet owner side of Adopt-a-Pet. So this is what allows pet owners to post pets to Adopt-a-Pet um, on an individual basis. So they're using the Rehome side of things to post their pets, to view applications, to view questions, but their pets are showing up on Adopt-a-Pet and the applicants are coming through the people who have searched on Adopt-a-Pet. 
Yeah, um, and so I just want to make sure that we reiterate on this call for any of you who feel intimidated by hearing iframes and code and those kinds of words that um, one of the reasons that we brought uh, April in this forum for you is because she has so generously offered to help anybody who needs some of that assistance to get things set up. So I don't want you to feel like after you leave today, well, that sounds really great, but I'm not the techie type or I don't get all of that stuff. Um, you really don't have to. Uh, April has offered to be able to make that as, as easy and, and kind of help walk you through that to get you set up. And then it's a pretty seamless experience. So when they come to your website, you can't really tell that things are flowing through adopt a pet It looks as if they're being presented on your website, which is really cool as well. Um, so I encourage you as you're listening today and um, thinking about what would help pets get adopted more quick, quickly or give resources immediately into the hands of those who are considering surrendering their animals to take that, that few seconds and send that email um, to get this party started because of the fact that she's so willing to, to help work with you guys um, individually to get those things set up. So I just want to make sure we give that disclaimer so that nobody leaves here intimidated about any of that, that techie geeky stuff that some of us geek out about that may or may not be the wheelhouse of everybody um, on this call. So I want to make sure we say that too. <laughs> yeah, it's it all sounds really complicated, but it's just about the two of us having either a phone conversation or an email conversation and it's yeah it's I can help you it's literally you know just some copying and pasting that needs to be done regardless of whether your website's on Wix or Weebly or you know whatever it is we can it's it's very very easy it sounds really really complicated and as somebody who worked at animal shelters and with rescues like I if somebody would have said like iframe and I would I'm like I don't even know what you're talking about so um, I apologize for being so technical but I will help you get this on your website or there's lots of things we offer like helping you set up canned responses so when somebody reaches out to you you just set them off this email saying here's all the resources about rehome and here's the link then here's what you need to do so that you're not having to spend all your time on the phone or you know updating your website constantly it's really just send an email to this email address and we're going to kick you back all the resources you need um i am definitely here to help you whatever you guys need so April, I'm going to maybe put you on the spot, but I think you do probably know this off the top of your head. But if you don't, that's OK. We can follow up. But um, so since we segued a little bit into explaining Adopt-a-Pet and the difference between that and Rehome, and it was so cool to see some of the Rehome data off the top of your head, and I know you've uh, articulated this before on other presentations about those who have leveraged Adopt-a-Pet, um, the jump in adoptions that they've seen just from merely exposing their pets more readily by utilizing adoptive head. So what I'll say is we have a hard time quantifying the jump in adoptions because we basically are just uh, sending the adopter over to you and we don't necessarily ever hear back, did that person adopt or not adopt? But what we do hear from anecdotally a lot is the number of inquiries you'll get. So if you're not getting a lot of interest in your pets, um, if you start posting through Adopt-a-Pet, you're going to get a lot, I mean a lot of interest. Um, so what will often happen is when I turn on an import for somebody, I usually warn them, like, for the next few weeks, you know, you really need to monitor the email or be available, whatever phone number we post, because all of those pets when we turn your import on are going to go out to these new pet alerts. So anybody who signed up for a saved search in the past month, when we add your pets the first time, you know, that email is being sent out to all of them saying, hey, here's all these new pets to the database. So what it really does is it widens your audience. So when somebody goes to your website, they are familiar with your organization. So they're looking specifically on your website. When you post to Adopt-a-Pet, anybody who searches buy a new dog, buy a puppy, Adopt-a-Pet pays to have our search show up at the top. They're going to click into our search. And so your audience is going to be huge. So right now we have 5 million unique visitors to our site every single month. So the piece of the pie is gigantic for you. So that's what we really quantify the difference is, is that you're going to get a lot more inquiries. Now, they might not be the, the, you know, maybe they don't match the criteria of what you're looking for, but you're definitely going to get a more 
you know, higher volume, which you should be able to find adopters in that volume um, for the pets that you're looking for. And we hear this over and over and over again from people who maybe are posting on just their their own website when you start posting to adopt a pet. It's like the floodgates open of people who are interested in your pets. Yeah, good, good clarification. Um, so for those groups, rescue groups maybe particularly who don't have a brick and mortar facility, and maybe they don't even have a full scale website, like they just kind of manage things through their Facebook group. Um, does Adopt-a-Pet have an applicable use case for, for folks like that? Do they integrate with Facebook groups or do they just advertise the fact that people can look for their pets via Adopt-a-Pet on their Facebook page or how does that work? We do have an integration with Facebook where you can actually have, uh, you can put the link to your adoptable pets on adopt pet so that your adoptable pets are always up to date on your Facebook. And then we also where you have where you can share specific profiles to Facebook. So we have a lot of integrations on the adopt pet side with Facebook. Um, okay. The rehome side, we do not. It's adoptapet.com that does. Um, so if you don't have, a, there's lots of organizations that don't have websites, but we mm -hmm. that are just using Facebook, and I think they like Adopt a Pet because we have so many options for you to post specific pets on Facebook, to print kennel cards, you know, that you're adding to Facebook, and to also have your pet list on Facebook that's always up to date because Adopt a Pet's up to date. Yeah. Perfect, okay. Um, we have just a few more minutes as we're wrapping up. I wanna make sure to put that all call out there for anyone on the line who has had questions come, maybe haven't taken that second to type it into our questions box. Um, and make sure that we offer that opportunity for you to get any of those last questions in. Um, and while I'm looking to see if more come in, I just wanna make sure that all of you know that this session does get recorded. Um, so yes, we're here live, but we do record it as well. And because you're registered, you'll automatically get a follow-up email that'll come from the same system that you registered within. And included in that email will be a one pager, I call it, that's inclusive of the link to this recording, as well as a link to additional resources that are directly relevant to <clears throat> what this particular webinar was about. And um, at the bottom of that, we'll also tell you what next month's Power Hour will be. Um, and so it will give you a, a link right there to actually go ahead and register if it's something that is of need or of interest for your organization. And March's theme is fostering. And so I know there are lots of people who are either running or desire to run or and or improve on um, their fostering programs. So uh, March will be an opportunity for you to hear from Kelly Dewar, who's a consultant with Maddie's Pet Forum, who's been doing a lot of stuff, really cool stuff with fostering. Um, I think that basically uh, wraps this session and we're just so grateful that we've had so many attendees here with us today. Um, to be able to hear this and we hope that when you do get that email that you'll take the time to share uh, this recording with other people that you think might really want to to know about this as well and then again take that time to shoot over that email to april and, and get this initiated if you haven't done so already april do you have anything last thoughts you want to add no, I, I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you, and I am at lots of conferences, so if you guys are going to a conference, there's a pretty good chance I'll be there, so if you want to stop by, we usually have a table, um, please stop by and introduce yourself, and if you have more questions or you want to do a live demo or you have additional staff or volunteers with you and you want to do a live demo, please feel free. <clears throat> you know, to reach out to me or to stop by and say hi, and I'm very, very passionate about Rehome, adopt a pet, you know, all of this. I, I, I really enjoy that I get to work with so many organizations across the country and help provide resources, free resources for you and for pet owners alike. So thank you so much for taking the time today. Yes, thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your day.